What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Burley Fishing. Today, taking a look at the Hobie Pro Angler 14 360 drive. This is new model for me. I have had it out now somewhere around 15 trips at this point. So I got a good feel for her. I know how she rides. I know how she works. I've got the ins and outs and we've done a heck ton of upgrades on this baby. So I'm gonna walk you guys through my fishing setup on this. Oh, by the way, you like the, uh, the new Cool Dad shades? Cool dad these are blenders this is the uh hot american go check them out they're just the most fun sunglasses you could ever get uh, but today we're gonna be walking through the ins and outs of this boat what i like maybe some things i don't like there's a few uh and for the most part just some of the upgrades that i've made to this thing that make fishing easier so let me first say this little little warning fair warning this is a very expensive boat when it comes to kayaks pretty much the most expensive you can get as far as kayaks unless unless you get the apex tier and you spend eleven thousand dollars don't do that the 14 foot version of the 360 drive starts at 47.99 so let me just hit you with that first pow right uh but it is to me well worth the investment even though there's a few kinks we'll talk about uh and with all these upgrades you know it just makes my time on the water easier managing water easier catching fish easier and i mean ain't that what it's all about right i will throw this little caveat at you though you don't need all of this to catch fish you can catch fish from the bank you can catch fish with one rod one reel one opportunity mom's spaghetti and you can throw a couple lures in the water and you can get bass don't get me wrong uh, the reason i went for this boat is because i love kayak fishing i love the mobility that it provides me i love the things that i can do with kayak fishing and i love hobies because of that pedal drive that mirage drive system that's just so convenient so easy to use so quiet and so fun to fish with as well as like all of these accessories we're going to walk through today so full disclosure it's a little bit of a longer walk through just because there's uh a lot of things on this right so we got a lot to talk about today uh, but rest assured we'll get through it maybe by the end of the video you'll see why this is a worthy investment for you if you're into kayak fishing and if not you'll at least see how i run my setup for fishing potentially tournament angling uh, and what i think works and what doesn't right so without further ado let's roll okay so for today let's start at the back of the boat with the anchor systems so i use a dual anchor system here at the back with a drag anchor or grapnel anchor run on an anchor wizard and a power pole rigged up right here we'll talk about uh, for shallow water situations so what this does is it allows me to stop or slow myself down and hold a position regardless of current wind water depth anything really so this setup although you know micro anchor the power pole micro anchor being a little bit more on the pricey side you know having some sort of drop anchor like this can really get the job done having both i think for me personally covers almost all situations and really makes fishing so friggin' easy and that's really what this is all about so power pole micro anchor if you want a more in-depth review of this anchor setup just go watch my anchor video on the channel scroll back a couple videos you'll see it there uh, but the micro anchor i ended up going with the battery instead of hard wiring it trust me guys get the battery it's 200 extra bucks you already spent 600 on this 100 plus a rebate on the ultra light spike uh, if you got a hobie you get this hundred dollar adapter here you're in it man you're in it commit all the way just buy the dang battery maybe buy two of them and keep them charged this battery will hold a charge all dang day i've had a chance to get out there for like i don't know 12 hours at this point and this thing held up all day uh, so it's going to be fine bring the charger with you if you're going on a longer trip charge it up you know between sessions it's fine uh, but this thing does the job and i have a controller up front i'll show you in a little bit uh, as well as a fob controller i never use but i keep it up in my watertight toolbox we'll show you later but you know regardless of that power poles are legit you can drop this spike into you know really any uh, bottom condition and it'll do a pretty good job holding you to that spot all right so as for the drag anchor the way we have this rigged up is we actually use this simple pulley system right here this is one half of the hobie trolley if you guys have an anchor trolley all you need is the rear pulley i ran our anchor line through that pulley down to a heavy duty locking carabiner and then as i said go check out the anchor video if you want to see more but this is just some basic chain these three lengths right here at one and a half foot each give me about a three, three and a half pound anchor. So this does the job. If we follow that line all the way up front, I added these extra tabs just for line management. Uh, these come with most anchor trolley systems, especially if you get the Hobie set up. 
that keeps the line down low so it doesn't slap up over this H rail. And then we've got our anchor wizard, boom, right here. So if I wanna drop this anchor, all I gotta do is turn this handle, watch the anchor. There you go, anchor's down. If I wanna pull it back up, we just start cranking that anchor, up she goes, and then it's a tension system. So once I let go of the handle, it stays in place just like that. Um, I'm a huge fan of this anchor. I've only been able to use it a few times so far, but I am friggin' loving it. Uh, it's awesome. And then the power pole for shallow water situations. So between the two, we can cover any type of water, and that makes me really happy. Uh, it's also low, low management because these chains don't get hung up in anything. So I never have to worry about backing up, dealing with current, or trying to retrieve an anchor at that point. Moving up, we got our rear eight inch hatch here. If I flip that bad boy open, we've got the Burley Pro Batarang rigged up to Burley Pro's brand FPV power here. This is a 12 volt, seven amp hour battery. So it's super small, super light. And the way these Batarangs work, um, I think Nakwa and a few other brands make these too, is you can put two batteries in here because they sit on either side. This is my inset for the skeg. So you got a rudder, and a skeg underneath here. And that needs to come up flush with the hull of the boat. So in these rear eight inch hatches, you're always gonna have this thing. So you can't have a big battery sitting back here, but this makes it so I can put not just one, but as you can see, you can mount another one to the other side. I can put two, so I can put two. And in the future, when we get, uh, say a lighting system, or I wanna add like the Yak Power switch system in here, I can add a bigger, 17 and a half amp hour battery to the other side and we can use that for a whole bunch of different cool stuff right up in front of that we've got the h crate so this is a very expensive kayak crate uh compares really only to like the uh wilderness systems and then yak attack has like their black pack which is pretty sweet i chose this because we got the h rail system on here and i have a hobie so i use h rail accessories so I can put them on here. So it just makes sense uh, for me. And then we added the waterproof cover, which I don't use for waterproofness. I don't really care about that. Waterproofness, definitely a word. Uh, but I do use this so I can zip this shut if I'm on rough waters and keep all this precious cargo in the crate. Very important. Um, so we got all our you know, planos in here. We can hold up to six, I believe, in here sitting this way, 3,700 size even. Here's a little baby 36 up front. Uh, so there's six tackle boxes right there. Easy access right behind the seat, as you can see. I like to keep the net in one of these rod holders. We've got plenty of rod storage here. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, this is the Yak Attack leverage net. So it flips open whoop, like that. And then we can flip it closed uh, when we're done after we land the fish. Also, I like this little forearm holder. So you can really get under like a heavier fish or a harder fighting fish. Flip it closed, she goes right back into that rod holder. These do come without this little nub extension there, but I obviously like that so that I can store it back here. And then what I like about the H-Crate too is you've got these little bungee straps. So I can always pop that down over the net and it's not gonna come out. Do the same obviously with your rod and reels back here. Another attachment I added to this thing, this is our bump board. So I just took the bump board mounts you can get from Yak Attack, mounted it vertically, this, this one comes from Austin Kayak, where you can get these bump boards obviously anywhere. But they're pretty standard size and width. So we pull that out, bring it up front. I can reach that really easy from this front seat, measure the fish, and then we can store it back in here fairly easily, just like that. So nice convenient spot for that. Uh, moving up, we're getting to some fun stuff here. So right here we have our track mount coming from the Boondocks landing gear. So Boondocks with their new HD hardware. This is a metal joint right here holding this aluminum knuckle. And then we've got our arm coming right down here to the HD wheels, they call them. It's just rubber lined, hard plastic material. Um, they don't float, right? Which actually makes it easier to get these on and off while in the water. And with the HD system here with these two bolts and a whole lot of Loctite and lock washers, this doesn't move as much as the, uh, I guess, 2018, 2019 models did with boondocks. So this is solid. And that makes it easier to slide this joint in and out when you're getting on and off the water. Uh, so this is extremely convenient now. I have used it on my PA-12 
I had the old system with these plastic gussets and it was, dude, it was impossible to get this thing on and off on the water. I've heard a lot of people complain about that. I will say, give Boondocks another chance. You can upgrade the HD hardware. You can buy it, buy a kit. It's like 44 bucks, totally worth it. If you have Boondocks, switch, right? If you don't have Boondocks and you've been on the fence because you've heard complaints or it's like a hard install, trust me, it's not a hard install. Just go back and look at our install video on the channel. I've done both, one on the 12 and one on the, this 14 right here, obviously, because we're looking at it. Uh, it's not that hard, totally worth it. And then you get all this extra track mounting space right here, which is cool. So I have a Scotty mount rod holder on this side and on that side so we can dual troll and catch a whole ton of fish as we're moving spot to spot. Moving on up here, we have our emergency paddle slash battle paddle. This is the backwater assault paddle, uh, which floats and is bright orange as you can see. It's easy to find. I use that just to push offshore if I'm launching shallow when you can't get the, uh, the 360 drive in. If you're too shallow, you might wanna push off, float out a little bit, then drop your drive in and pedal away. Works a lot better in my opinion. Uh, I do have the full size paddles also up in the hull storage. I'll show you that in a minute. Plastics on board. I always carry one Bass Mafia with all my like paddle tail swimming stuff. And then under the seat, I usually keep a storage bin, not quite watertight, but whatever. And that's just full of about a billion plastics. I can seriously take way too much gear with me on this boat. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, if you guys want, let me know in the comments. I'll do a what's in my boat episode of this. Uh, where we go through just like everything I actually carry every time I go out. Uh, and trust me, it's a lot. So here's a cool feature. I actually switched out the cargo netting that comes with the Hobies automatically. That's a stock setup. It's like this rubber webbing that goes back here and opted for my Burley Pro side bros, which you can actually mount to the, the Vantage seat. Um, but I had them on there. They take up a lot of space. And then like if you're putting in spinning reels, for example, you can't put them in past this thing. You can see how much this sticks out. Imagine it on the seat, not ideal. Watch one of my old kayaking videos, you'll see it in play. It meant I couldn't really get to my rod locker system in the front, which meant it wasn't worth it. So popped it off the seat, moved it to uh, the side of the boat and I love it. So I'll store often like extra, you know, baits that I'm not using or that I'm done with. I'll throw them in here. I've got another one on the other side right there. And then this one's cool because it actually has a spot for your pliers right there. That is legit and helps a lot. Otherwise back here, you've obviously got your rod locker. You can hold six, three on each side. I usually take four, maybe five with me. So I don't quite use the full capacity here, but still an amazing feature on these Hobies. I love it to death. Then we've got our in-hole storage here. Uh, what I like with this, you do have like this webbing that you can use up top. So I might throw like my roadie wireless mic in here just so I can get to it easy. And then you have, uh, you know, the drop-in bucket. I prefer to use this, honestly, over the tackle storage that comes with this thing stock. So you have a, a tackle storage that holds two 3,600 size planos and it kind of folds up and out. You guys would probably see it on my older boat walkthrough, the PA-12, but on this one I opted to take it out and I've been doing this for a while now and I switched to this drop-in bucket, which for 20 bucks is an amazing accessory. So I can carry all sorts of stuff in here, you know, neck gaiters, extra parts, camera handles, extra line, whatever, tools, things like that. And then I actually double water type this. So I've got a Plano to hold my camera batteries. And then we have this portable charger right here. So I can be charging batteries around the clock as I'm fishing allows me to get through much longer days without running out of batteries, which is clutch. So here we actually have a power pole control that I just uh, double-sided taped to the side of the boat. And I can access that pretty easily. And you can see up and down there, we can make that baby work. Here we got our trusty fish finder, the Lowrance Hook 2. Uh, I've been using this one for a couple of years now. Big fan, love the unit easy to wire on the Hobies uh, with this through hole wiring system that they have built in, uh, which is watertight as well. So nice work, Hobie, love that stuff. So we've got that and that is what's rigged to the battery in that back hatch back here. So running off that seven amp, I can run this thing for, I think 12 to 14 hours 
I've run it a few days in a row and had zero issues with it dying. So it's been pretty sweet. Okay, so moving up, we got our cup holder. Very, very important accessory. <sighs> These are a necessity. Uh, you gotta have water when you're on the water, especially in the heat of the summer or you gonna die. So this is very important. I do recommend actually getting another one of these. This is part of why we have the H rail on the H crate back here. So H rail mount, another cup holder behind me, right? Seats right here. And then this is actually gonna be holding my refill bottle, just a bigger like 24, 30 ounce bottle of water on ice in a Yeti. Uh, so I can keep that water cool even in the sun. And then I will refill this bad boy right here. This holds about 30 ounces. So uh, it should be pretty good. I might even consider bringing like a gallon jug uh, not, not a Yeti. I don't have a million dollars. We're going to bring like a, a gallon refillable jug that I might keep in the front cockpit storage, uh, as well, just so I have enough water. You really got to stay hydrated. Very important. A little further up the rail, I have our H rail bin. This is the big bin. I love this thing. This carries my main two 3,700 size, uh, tackle boxes for the day. We got our beautiful Busby Colony 28 right here, which is packed full of baits. Uh, this would be like all my spinners, crankbaits, swim baits, jigs, chatter baits. You got some inline spinners there, some other plastics, Ned rigs, all the stuff, hooks, sinkers, all of it. And then I like to also carry, this is the Plano Edge terminal box. So this carries literally everything else I could ever use. And you can see between these two boxes, and then all these plastics right here, it's pretty much all I'm gonna use. Uh, I usually keep the age crate zip shut the whole day. And if I just get into a situation where I'm like, oh, I could use this thing that I didn't pack up here, then I go back there. And it's usually like for top waters, frogs, crankbaits, something like that. So it's really convenient to be able to carry all this stuff pretty close to me. Um, so quick access. Last two front features here. One is this camera mount. This is a Yak Attack Panfish. This is the middle range. I think it's like 28 inches or something like that. Uh, so it's decently long. Comes all the way up to sort of this like, similar to a Ram ball mount. That's fully adjustable. And then up to our GoPro mount right here. I like having it this way because as you can see, it's just looking at the inside of the boat so you can see me. Hey, hi guy. I'm there fishing, casting, landing fish. I can hold the fish up to the camera closer the better so it looks like a real big fish of course uh, and we just keep it mounted on the track right here i like this pan fish because it's easy to adjust pop on and off see this stays track mounted the whole time so if i gotta switch batteries i can just pop that off or if you push it in then it actually pops up a little bit and it's able to swivel to a new position but it's still like locked in super cool love this thing very well worth it. I think it's like a hundred bucks, maybe one of the better camera mounts out there for sure. Then we get to this really important guy right here, possibly the most important accessory I have on the boat. This here boys is Snorlax. Hi Snorlax. He's been a part of my boats for a long, long time. Basically I got my first big boat. I was hanging out with a couple of my buddies, Aaron and Paul. We were fishing. They were fishing super light, skinny little boats and they were making fun of me because mine was super heavy. So we joked that theirs was, you know, Slender is the Old Town Vapor. So we call it Vaporeon, which is like a really fast, sleek Pokemon, right? Uh, so I was like, oh, well, if yours are Pokemon, mine's a Snorlax because it's super big, fat, and slow. And, uh, well, this guy's much faster than other boats that I've had in this general gigantic size category. She's still pretty wide, pretty big. So reminds me of a Snorlax. So I've had this sticker on my... Uh, Old Town Predator 13, my PA-12, and now on the PA-14. Just a staple of my boats. I really love that thing. I had a John boat once. I named it the Snorlax 2. So all about that Snorlax. And finally, boys, we are up to the front. The, the piece de resistance, a uh, very important section here. I love that the 14-footer comes with this gigantic cargo space. There's actually a ton of stuff in here we got to go through and I'm sweltering in this heat now. So uh, this, is, this is very important. This is your lunchbox. Uh, you boys have a Yeti, you know, whatever. You think you're cool. This is my daughter's llama lunchbox and uh, I'm cooler than you, so get out of here. Uh, you always gotta have the monster bass ready to rock so you can take some sick pictures with the box. Uh, we've got some extra plastics. These are our beautiful rabid baits. We've got some Nico baits there too. 
You got extra gloves in case your hands get hot. You got a towel, you got sunscreen, you got first aid kit, you got TP, because that's important. You got bug spray, you got pee bottle, you got an extra chesty, uh, you got some extra anchor links in here. And then this, this thing's pretty cool actually. If you guys don't have this, get this now. This is a pro upgrade, but this is a watertight toolkit. So we got Allen wrenches in there, we got a screwdriver in there, we've got the power pole anchor fob if I need it. I don't usually use that one, I usually use the in-haul one. Uh, then we got a flashlight in case we get stuck out at night, we got a wrench, and we got a stringer in case we get into some, uh, you know, a mass of gills, right? Uh, we do have fish scale here with the bottle opener. That boy's, that boy's dirty. Got some, I'm gonna have to go clean this guy off, right? That guy's got some gunk on him. Oh, she still works. We gotta clean her up though, that's gross. Bottle opener on top, pretty rad. Lastly, we got a bow line here. So it's just so if I have to, you know, drag the kayak somewhere, I don't know, you know, might need that. Could be very valuable. Uh, or if you wanna link up with a buddy and just tie your kayaks together, or uh, if you wanna take your spouse fishing and she needs help steering, there you go. So last little thing in here, if you actually take this out, on the inside of the hull, what I like to keep is some rain gear at all times, you know, just in case I don't wanna be wet. So we got rain pants, rain coat. And then these would be the actual uh, two pieces of your kayak paddle. Uh, this is just the stock paddle, comes with the Hobie already, but we stuffed her up in the hull here. So it's out of the way, but if I get into super skinny water, can't use a drive, I know I got this here, so I can just pull the drive, snap these pieces together, paddle on through, man. I think it's a good emergency situation to be prepared for. But there's also plenty of room in here and way back for camping gear, uh, meals and stuff like that if I'm going on a longer river trip as well. Finally, not really a fishing setup or anything, but this is the 360 drive. So we've got our fins, which rotate in all directions via this handle right here. So we can manage water like nobody's business. And of course you got the most comfy seat, hands down, hands down, in all kayaks. No argument to be had here, sorry. This thing's amazing, come at me bro. Anyways, that's it, that's the walkthrough boys. All right guys, thanks for watching the walkthrough. Hopefully you learned something through that, just maybe if anything, at least an idea of how you could rig your own kayak or if you're using something like a Hobie Pro Angler. I know for me personally, like it really helped to see how other people were doing it, uh, just to get some ideas to brainstorm, you know? Um, so hopefully that was helpful for you guys. If it was, let me know. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, drop me a comment. Let me know some things you're doing similar or different. Always interested to hear that. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you out on the water.